Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's very nice to see all of you here on this beautiful Wisconsin day. Also very nice of God to provide us with some beautiful weather. The altar flowers for today are from Audrey and Harlow Gerhardt in honor of their 72nd wedding anniversary. <laughs> What do you think the trick is right. to staying married so long? What do you think is the trick, the key? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him. Yeah. What? Love your man his way. Let <laughs> Harlow have his oh. way. That's right. <laughs> and he says, that's right. <laughs> happy lies, happy lies. <laughs> All right, calm down, everybody. What's that? <laughs> we are in need of some additional coffee hour posts. So if you would like to do that, please sign up. That is on the kiosk in the entryway here. Just sign up to do that. Um, there are also some very nice thank you notes that we have posted recently on the kiosk. So if you haven't stopped by and checked out what's up on that kiosk, Recently, check out those thank you notes. Um, and then George Pierce says hello, but he is up at the nursing home. He wanted people to know he was doing okay, but he is up at the nursing home, and it sounds like he's bored and would like to have visitors. <laughs> Are there other things that we should be announcing? We met our initial goal for the um, school kits of 75, so anything that we get now will be our bonus. Last year we made it like about 105. Okay, so. so we are in bonus territory for school kits in anything. So keep up the good work of finding stuff for school kits so that we have lots of stuff to make lots of school kits with. Awesome. Good. Anybody else? Any anything? Um, please rise as you are able as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. Do we question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live? Do we turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you? Do we take offense at your teachings and your ways? Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? 
Share with us the words of eternal life, and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You have been forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 689, Praise and Praise. <laughs>
living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animal. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm chapter 34, verses 9 through 14. Hear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence to the Lord.
So he had found a family style restaurant in his town and he was kind of happy and excited because they had a special at this restaurant. I think it was like five bucks. You got soup and bread. And so he would come at lunchtime and the owner would be there and he came and he got the soup and the bread special and he ate up everything that had been brought to him and he went to pay the bill and the owner at the cashier station said to him, well, how was everything? And, and the man said, you know, your soup was great and everything that I have here has always over the years been great, but I noticed, you know, I only got two pieces of bread and that seemed a little skimpy to me. I could have used a little bit more bread. So the owner made a note of this in his mind. And when he saw the man come in the next day, he tipped off the man's waitress and he said to the waitress, bring him a couple extra pieces of bread. And she did. And so the man ate his soup and he ate up. He must have really liked bread, all four slices of that bread. And he went to pay at the register. And he said basically the, the same thing to the owner again. He said, you know, everything was great, but I really could, I really like the bread. I could have used, you know, more bread. So the owner figures, I'm gonna get this guy. <laughs> so he goes and he gets like one of those French loaves, you know what I'm talking about? And he slathers one side with a bunch of butter and, and another side of butter. This guy comes every day, so he just has to wait till lunchtime for this gentleman to come in. And the gentleman, sure enough, comes in, sits down, orders the soup and bread special, and the waitress brings him out his soup and this loaf of French bread. And the gentleman eats his soup, and he must really like bread. He ate a whole loaf of this French bread. He goes up to pay. And the, the owner says, well, how was everything today? And the gentleman says to the owner, well, great, but I see you're back to only handing out two pieces of bread. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that joke from Dan Dibbert. <laughs> so if you liked it, I decided to tell it, but if you didn't like it, tell him. <laughs> We've been talking about bread in a series from the Gospel of John a lot. And we're kind of here toward the end of this series, but also in the thick of it. Jesus is saying to us in our gospel message for today, I am the living bread from heaven. You know, like the manna in the wilderness. Like the bread that you would get from wisdom's table. If you eat of this bread, says Jesus, you will live forever. And this causes the good Judeans that were there that day to dispute, to argue, to talk about this with themselves, saying, this is confusing. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? I don't know if you remember, but probably about six months ago here, I gave a little talk about something called the Noah laws, which say that we as believing folks, and definitely good Judeans, are asked by God to refrain from eating flesh of living creatures. How can this man give us his flesh? To eat. And Jesus then doubles down on his rhetoric. He's got to know what they're talking about amongst themselves. He says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Anybody ever heard the word hyperbole? <coughs> Some English folks in here, right? Yeah. So, Jesus doesn't say to one of the disciples, 
handy at night, writing and start slicing. We also talked in this series, at least I know I have, about the importance of what we take into ourselves and how what we take into ourselves from a food consumption and also a media consumption standpoint matters. I don't watch the nightly news because it makes me feel yucky. Even with the feel good ends and the stories that they tag on at the end, right? What we take into ourselves matters. And good Judeans would know that too. They would have heard this stuff from the from the ancient scripture that we heard earlier in our other lessons about how wisdom has built her table and it's ready there for the taking for all of us who are invited to come and eat from be wise says the scripture by eating from the table of wisdom can we eat wisdom well sort of I have some teachers and some retired teachers here right you know, we can eat wisdom. We, in our modern context, might be more apt to say that a student was drinking wisdom than eating wisdom, right? Boy, this was a great lesson for me. The kids drank it up. <laughs> yeah? No beverages consumed. So we can eat that which Jesus spiritually has for us to offer, just like the table of wisdom is available to us, without needing Jesus to be here with a knife and a cup. Is it their fault that this is confusing you? No. So let's be very careful about giving those Judeans present the first time Jesus started to talk like this to folks for being confused because we moderns with 2,000 years on our belts to have worked on trying to figure this out are still sometimes confused about what Jesus is talking about in this story. Know this though. Jesus also says, when we take these things into ourselves, when we take what Jesus is about spiritually into ourselves, it matters. It matters so much that those who are able to take Jesus into themselves, even a little bit of Jesus, will have eternal life and be raised up on the last day. Because Jesus is flesh, says Jesus, is somehow different food than the food we've been eating. It's true food. And the drink that Jesus has to offer is somehow different drink than what we've been drinking. It is a true drink. Jesus says spiritually, these are the things that the divine is about. So eat this up. Drink this up, and it will matter for you. Because we, when we do that, become the body of Jesus. And that's good news that's got a little bit of a caveat. Because we are the body, we bear a responsibility to be Christ for one another now in the world. We are responsible to make sure that we have drunk in enough Christ, enough wisdom at places like this, 
that we can make an impact when we see others in the world and in the community in need. Now, that's tricky, right? I got a call this morning as I was walking out my door to come to church. Can you guess who it was from? It's really germane to this topic. Anybody got any guesses? It was not the President of the United States. <laughs> it was not George Pierce. But it was someone calling me up. I regularly get these calls saying, Pastor, I'm financially in a hard way. What can your church give me? Right? We don't do that as a congregation individually. Our churches in our community have come together and made an emergency assistance fund, and there's a way to get access and things out of that emergency assistance fund, and I don't hold any of that power or control. <laughs> but I can tell you who you need to call in order to get access to that. And after hours, if you're stranded in the, the city of Boston, the people that you need to call to get access to that fund are actually the police department. Because I said, I'm not the right person to help you this morning to this gentleman on the phone. That does not make me an unfaithful human. It does not make me a bad believer. It does not make our fellowship of belief, our expression of Christianity in this place, any different. See, we do have responsibilities to one another, but there are lines and limits to those responsibilities. Now, I have a whole other sermon in my pocket about tithing and what tithing is and how it actually would have worked in the ancient world and how individuals do have responsibilities to go get the things that they need from themselves even when things are available and yada yada and so on. But eating and taking in Spiritual positivity from Jesus does not mean that each and every one of us has to then turn around and be able to be everything that meeting all needs for all people. Hmm? If you go to the mall in Madison and see the people standing with the signs and decide to drive by them rather than give them money, you are not failing at the mandate that Jesus has given to us all to love one another as best as possible. If you see your friend or your neighbor in spiritual need aching and you decide not to reach out or say anything, we may or may not, depending upon your historical relationship with your neighbor, be experiencing the spiritual issues. See, being the body of Christ comes with all sorts of challenges and, and caveats, right? It's not easy. There was a show on TV called The Good Place. Anybody going to be mad at me if I ruin the show The Good Place for you? Hi. So there's an episode in The Good Place which takes place in heaven or hell, depending on where you are in the series. And they're in purgatory, actually, during this episode. They're being seen, this young person is being seen by a judge. And they're talking out with the judge the point system of how you need to get points, positive points in your point account in order to qualify in this spiritual system in order to get into heaven and how nobody gets into heaven anymore. 
because things have gotten so complicated here on the planet that you can't even eat an apple without getting the merits for having done it. See, because there's pesticides involved in some apples and maybe the people that grow apples worldwide aren't treated so well. Maybe the guy who transported that apple to the grocery store you got it from wasn't treated so well. And even an ethically sourced and sustainably grown apple, they figured out a way to explain how that causes us demerits. Now, I don't think you have a heavenly bank account where you're getting merits and demerits. That's not the point of sharing this example with you. The point that I'm trying to make is that life as the body of Christ for us as modern believers is extremely complicated. And I believe that the Jesus that I have come to know and love only wants us to do the best that we can with the lot that we have been given. And I believe that Jesus also forgives us when we fail to always do our best. Even though we are a part of Christ's body, we are, after all, only individual human beings. And it's tough. We are the body. We then are a part of the miracle, too. We can be a part of the bread that came down from heaven. We are the ones, when folks see an accident, it is other humans that run toward the sea, right? It is humans on the end of the line for emergency services. After all, sending people to come help. We are on the hook to be the friends and neighbors and caregivers. We can only do that as best as we can. Just like our ancestors. Eat this bread, though, Jesus says. Soak it in, and you will live forever. And that's something. I invite you to join with me in singing our aptly picked hymn of the day. It is hymn number 491. Oh, let us eat. <laughs>
called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us for this meal. Make us be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ. Who on the day of the King death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Jesus brought us life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Our ascending hymn this morning is hymn number 820. Oh, save your precious thing. <coughs> Yeah. 